going to be looking at uh, installing the freedom bracket, so you're going to want to make sure and have a level. We have some shims here in case we might have some problems with our floor or cabinets being off level. Of course, you're going to need your, uh, your drill and your, um, your electric uh, driver there. Uh, we also use a hand, a hand ratchet to install, and this is if you want to take particular care with your brackets, not to scar up the, uh, the face of them. We've got our fasteners for attaching it, uh, the drill bit. Um, handy dandy, uh, very important eye protection, don't want you to hurt yourself. We've got some silicone, you can also use some adhesive. Uh, those are some of the tools, and I can't forget the finishing nails to attach your fascia onto your, onto your uh, substructure, and a tape measure. Then, of course, the, the last piece of the puzzle is the, uh, the brackets themselves. Welcome to Federal Brace's installation guide video. I'm Scott Toll with Federal Brace, and this is Brock Seaford, sales manager for Federal Brace, and we're going to be showing you today how to install the Freedom style countertop brace. As you can see, the Freedom does not have a gusset or a cross member between its supporting flanges, and for this reason, the Freedom is used in a uh, countertop installation commonly called uh, um, hidden. Hidden, hidden. A hidden or, or invisible as well as sometimes people will call it floating because you can actually not see the support underneath the, uh, the countertop extension. It does not have that gusset right in here. So it's not obviously not as strong as one of the standard L gusset brackets that we offer. But the other good thing is though, as Scott was pointing out, that without the gusset, this can be hidden inside of the cabinet where you can't see it. The only thing that could ever be seen would be by toddlers and your drunken friends lying on the floor <laughs> would be the brace underneath the countertop itself. And on a good note, the toddler wouldn't know what it is and the drunk can't focus. <laughs> How, how long do we go again? We go to 20 inches. Okay. Uh, when it gets out to 20 inches, 18 and 20 inch sizes, we're using half inch material. And, um, and the hole sizes here? Uh, those are for quarter inch fasteners. Okay. So we're using quarter inch fasteners to fasten. You can see this has three holes. I believe we increase the number of holes as the length of the flange uh, increases. Right. The larger uh, sizes have four holes. Okay. And the one other item that I wanted to make sure and be clear on, this particular bracket is black. We've painted this bracket. Yes, but, we have. But we do not actually ship these painted uh, at this time. Right now we ship them raw. So um, this is to allow you, the customer, or the installer, to paint the bracket according to, uh, according to the color of your particular application. Uh, we're going we're gonna to show you together how to do this. And what we've done is we've built a, uh, a makeshift um, uh, island, very small island. Uh, you can see that we're using standard uh, uh, stud, two by four stud construction here. We've got um, uh, your, your individual studs in between. This would be, um, this would be similar to a, to a common um, uh, construction, right. substructure, mm -hmm. right? For, for, for a custom built island, this okay. might be the uh, type of construction. Right. Be. And, and, and this would probably be a very good point to, to make sure that everyone understands mm -hmm. that you want to make sure that your substructure is solid. Right. right. And flat and level with the floor. We've got an open uh, two by four um, uh, structure and, uh, and we're going to place uh, four brackets on the structure, one at each, um, uh, one at each stud. And uh, we're going to start actually in the middle stud. Now you can start wherever you want to, but you want to make sure that that first bracket is nice and level because everything else is going to be measured off of that. Uh, on the spacing of these brackets, uh, this, we call it a span, bracket to bracket, center to bracket to center to bracket, go no more than 18 inches in between. 12 to 18 inches is what you're looking at, depending on the, the, the size of your overhang, the thickness of your granite. Um, you're going to want to not, definitely not go over 18 inches on a non-gusseted bracket. So we have our bracket here, we've got it centered on our stud, and we're checking the level here, the bubble, making sure that we're, that we're, that we're level. Now, in this particular instance, we are, uh, let me bring that down a little bit there. That's, that's flat on the, on the surface of the, of the bracket here. We're level, we got the level there, and we're even with the top of the, uh, the, the, the top of our stud wall. I'm gonna mark my, uh, I simply put a pencil in here, mark my, my the, the positions where I'm gonna drill the pilot holes for my fasteners. I'm using a uh, 
a, a drill bit for a quarter inch uh, fastener. I want to make sure that I'm just drilling a pilot hole. I want to give my fastener as much bite as possible. Put on a quarter inch hex head uh, socket onto my driver. So I got my holes drilled in there. Now I'm going to uh, position my bracket here. Now you don't want to over tighten it, okay? It's good to use a hand ratchet. And that just allows you just to snug it up, but don't, but, but don't overdo it. We've got one, uh, one in, we'll put the other three in, and then that bracket will be attached. You notice that I, I overdid it here, just to show you. If you overdo it there, you can take some touch-up paint. If you, if you really need to get it touched up, again, this will be covered up, but if you need to get that touched up, you can actually touch that up with some, some metallic paint. Now Brock put on an extension, and that's so that he can get up in here into the, uh, into the angle, the hole up in the angle, without, uh, without, hurting, the, uh, without hurting the bracket. Now while, while Brock's doing that, let me mention this to you. Um, this particular bracket is 10 inches, extends out 10 inches. Uh, federal brace guidelines state that we do not, uh, that we suggest that you do not extend past four inches past the, past the brackets. So this is level from bracket to bracket. And you can see that, uh, that we have the bubble in the middle. So, so that means that we have checked level in, um, in this plane mm -hmm. as well as horizontally between our brackets. So we've got a good, uh, a good level structure that we're starting off with and we can continue, proceed to add the other brackets and then, and then, uh, and then put our countertop extension on. How about, how about in instances where you, you have a, you have a uh, shorter overhang but you wanna, you wanna use a, a longer bracket? How, how likely it is that it's gonna be seen? How far well, set back does it need to be? If you get it within probably no more than two inches, it'll be okay. So we've installed three, three of our brackets and again, we wanted to show you uh, one of the neat features about the, the, the Freedom Bracket. We've extended our counter back out. We're three inches past the 10 inch uh, bracket. So we're at, we're at a 13 inch extension uh, for our Freedom Brackets. And we've got one more bracket to put on and we're gonna use that bracket to show you, uh, uh, show you how to install it with your countertop on. <coughs> the whole idea is once the countertop is sitting on top of the cabinet or the island or whatever the case may be, is that it's sitting there probably as about as square as it's going to get at the moment. So if your overhang is not so big and the fabricator agrees, it's really convenient just to put the slab on top of it and then install the bracket after the fact. And the, and the, real, and the real neat feature about this is, is let's say that, you have, that you're renovating your home, okay, and you are changing the substructure or the fascia on your substructure and you want to put in, you want to remove an old wood corbels, even some old metal corbels that were visible, you want to put in a floating or a more contemporary look, you want to put in a floating countertop or a hidden countertop support. Well, you're not going to change out your granite in this instance, you just want to change the fascia and you want to pull your brackets off. So with the freedom bracket, you have the freedom to install the bracket without removing your countertop. If this were a corbel that had a keyhole structure or if it were a metal bracket um, that, uh, that had to be fastened in a certain manner uh, underneath the granite that would have to be removed in order for you to replace that, uh, that, that bracket. But in this instance with the Freedom Bracket we can actually install this um, with the countertop on. So I'm going to get down here and again, as Brock was mentioning, this is simply going to get this thing square up on top, all right? Now, in some instances, you may not be working with a level counter. Like, for example, this instance. If I push this bracket flat against my, my, my uh, stud, you'll see that the face or this top flange comes down from the granite surface. So what we need to do is we're going to have to shim this bracket because we want that metal part to be snug up against the countertop base. So we're going to show you how to shim it. In some instances you might find this happening and this is due to potentially uh, being out of level on your substructure, on your floor even, in your cabinets, or 
you could, uh, you, we, we could have actually, while we, while we attempt to do a 90 degree bend, we may be slightly off. And as you extend out that flange, that, uh, um, that slight variance or tolerance change may actually cause a significant gap between your bracket. That can be corrected by simply shimming the bracket. So I'm going to mark my first hole here. Up under here, I got it snug at the back up against my countertop. I'm going to mark, I'm going to mark my bottom hole. Actually, I'm going to mark my top hole here. And we're going to start there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to attach my first, um, install my first uh, fastener. But I'm not going to tighten it all the way down, OK? Again, see the gap up here right here. I'm going to take my shim, and I'm going to feed it up under my bracket here. I'm going to simply tap it in until it's snug. Hopefully it's going to get snug here in just a moment. And that is going to give you full support. I'm going to come back over with my drill. I'm going to drill through my shim. So we've got our, uh, we've got our countertop supported here. We are ready now to finish off our counter. If you, if you recall, I was mentioning earlier that we had a quarter inch thick mm -hmm. bracket, right, material. Right. And we have a quarter inch uh, standoff from our, from our hex head bolts. And so what you're going to need to do is when you're fastening your fascia on, depending on what you're using, paneling, sheetrock, whatever it is that you're going to be putting over the top, you're going to need to fur out this, this, um, this uh, board here, your substructure, in order, to f in order to put that fascia over the top of it. And we'll show you how to do that as well. Brock uh, very professionally pre-cut our fur strips, so we're ready to put them on. No waiting. We're using some, uh, some small um, uh, paneling board nails to, uh, to nail these on, nothing too substantial. Uh, if you're using a heavier, uh, heavier fascia, like a stone or tile fascia, uh, you might need to use a little heavier nail to, to fasten your furring on. Fascia here is evened up with the bracket. So we're going to mark the outer edges each side of the bracket. Then, after we've done that, we'll take the board back up and we'll, we'll draw in a quarter inch notch that we're going to put in there that'll fit around the bracket. So I'm simply outlining our brackets here. And we're going to cut, we're going to start by cutting off about a quarter of an inch where I'm marking. Now, remember, this is going to be up underneath your countertop. The likelihood of someone seeing it is similar to the likelihood that they'll see the brackets. Very unlikely, unless they actually get up under your counter to look at it. We need the, the T-square or the, not exactly a T, is it? It's L square. Coping saw, pencil, and we will need to drill also. That's a quarter already. That's a quarter. And we want to drill a hole in the corner here. Now, the reason we drill the holes is so you can get the saw into it. That's a mighty fine job anyways, Brett Brock. Okay, so we've got our fascia goes over the top, see? Um, you can see we got a little bit of space in here, but not much. This one's, this one's a lot closer, a lot tighter. And you don't see the bottom flange. In order to see the, uh, in order to see the brackets themselves, you're going to have to get underneath the counters because if you stand up straight, there's, there's, no, uh, there's no indication that there's a bracket there. I'm just going to put a couple nails in this to finish it off. So we've completed our project. We've installed our Freedom countertop brackets, and you can see, you can't see them. They're floating. When you look up underneath there, you can see that you have the metal supports underneath your countertop. We appreciate you taking the time to view this. Uh, check out our YouTube um, channel, and you'll see some other countertop installation guides uh, videos. 
And uh, we have plenty of resources on our website that they can go to as well. Right, Brock? Yep. You can spend hours looking at the resources on our website. If you're so bored out of your gourd, you have nothing better to do, get on and look at all of them. You will know more about countertop supports than you would ever need to know. You'll become the neighborhood expert. So we look thank, at them. Yeah, so we thank you very much for, uh, for joining us today. And um, if we can help you out with anything, let us know. Give us a call. Go to www.federalbrace.com and we'll help you out. Have a good day. www.federalbrace.com. That's it. Thank you.